Hey everybody, it's Paul here from RTV Limited. I'm talking with Paul Lucina from Panorama and Penn's View Hotel, both businesses. Panorama is a, a restaurant and Penn's View is a hotel. Tell us more about it before I ruin everything about your business. Uh, so Penn's View Hotel was open and the restaurant opened in 1990. As uh, We had one building, it's the original building, 14, 14 North Front Street. Uh, was a, At that time, it was 27 rooms. We still had the wine bar which is the, you know, the wine machine was still had 120 wines by the glass. Um, and then as we, uh, so my family's background was in restaurants. My mm -hmm. grandfather came here from Italy with my dad in the sixties. They opened uh, a restaurant down the street called La Familia okay. in 1976. That was very successful. They did a neighborhood. It was, uh, you know, back then it was very run down. It was very here like, on front street. Yeah. Front okay. street, you know, Mark in this, the street was, you know, before the highway and, and um, the highway's over there, but I was like, the streets are all messed up. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one of the oldest parts of the city. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a warehouse district. So a lot of working warehouses still at that time in the seventies and eighties. Um, but you know, then we had the recession in 87, 88. Uh, so this building, the buildings became available. So they bought the first building and then uh, in 1990. Um, so the rest, the hospitality, those are my family's backgrounds, hospitality. That was like my first job was in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah you learn how to take yeah, care of kitchen, people. Yeah. Kitchen. I was a bus, <laughs> bus boy, waiter, bartender. I did, I did it all. Mm -hmm. Um, started in the kitchen though. Uh, so then they bought this in 90, it was 27 rooms, had no experience in hotels whatsoever. Um, they did bring somebody in, <clears throat> excuse me. And having, um, you know, you know, being a, a, a smart businessman, they, they, you know, they, they they watch the bottom line a lot. Um, so they bought the building, the two buildings, the building that we're sitting in, in 2002, the prior building in 1994. So they expanded the business, uh, from, so they bought the two adjacent buildings. So it's basically three buildings that make up one, yeah, one location, the hotel and the restaurant is in the lobby level or first level of the, of the hotel, the buildings, uh, there's a wine bar, a restaurant. Uh, an event space that we're event in. Event space and the banquet space. There's yeah. a wine cellar. Mm -hmm. There's a meeting space. Um, oh, there's a second. wine cellar too? I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, oh, down cellar. underneath. A smaller dining room, yeah. Okay, wow. Um, and, and then it's like a speakeasy type. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of quiet and quaint. And it's like, you know, if you don't like being in the hustle bustle of things, and it's like, you know, and it's more more intimate, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and there's like a, a door that no one has a key to, literally. It's, so it's funny exactly, that it's like yeah, a speakeasy. Yeah. And it's got a. You it should have, advertise that. It does have yeah. a window. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. funny you said that. That's funny you said that. It does have like, like a little knock window. three times. Yeah, yeah, and it's back. got metal on it. There's like, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. It does say wine cell on it, so it's a little, a little. We give it nice. away a little bit. Um, and then, um, so now we have 51 rooms. Uh, the meeting space. Uh, 51 now. So you've doubled your occupancy. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had 52, but I turned mm -hmm. that into a fitness room. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, and then um, we've been that. So since 1990 until now, our anniversary was in October. Mm -hmm. Uh, so 20 years, um, just sort of, you know, kind of going with the flow, like, you know, having, so my uncle still own and operate the restaurant down the street, um, La Familia, La Familia okay. and that's, op that's been open since, you know, 76. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, you know, odd that restaurants even stay open past two or three no, years. No, it's true. My, my brother-in-law owns a cafe and he was one of the first guests and he's been in business 16 years and he said the exact same thing, you know, so it's, it's either make or break it early. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. It's a tough business. Uh, the margins are small though. Yeah. No, you have to keep your food costs down. Mm -hmm. Um, spoilage you know, down. That's what spoilage, I learned. Yeah. yeah. Spoilage. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, BYOB is like, I, I, it's really hard, harder for them because, uh, if you know, the alcohol helps it's huge margins more, and alcohol. Yeah. yeah there's huge margins, margin, you know, yeah. markups and, and it, um, fair markups, but they have to be because we have to. We yeah. we in the state in Pennsylvania have to pay a little bit more than right because the state owns all. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So there's there's a so you have to be smart about like how you price things, how you market things. Uh, and the hotel is is just it goes with the flow of business in the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so like when Pope was here, you made you probably were packed to the no. The because I think people were scared away for the Pope. The DNC yeah. was a flip side of that. Okay, you oh. know, it was the same year, uh, and that was because you know, states and actually NPR bought us out. Like they had, they took over the whole hotel. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, actually forced me that uh, my, uh, <laughs> my, my uh, internet speed because they had to upload and download. Their, oh their yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause they, they actually listen to a lot of their podcasts. So I mean, yeah. shout out to NPR. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
of course we listened to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so they, uh, yeah, so that was, that was more of a, uh, when that, when that happens, things like that, like citywide conventions help army Navy game. Yep. We, mm-hmm. we were just talking about offline. We were just talking about the Navy and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, yeah, those weekends, those sports weekends, Phillies are, bi- are in the playoffs. Like yeah. that helps. Yeah. Um, when the Red Sox, you know, speaking of like, Ooh, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> so, but also we're, uh, you know, close to the river. So, uh, anything that's going on at the festival pier or mm-hmm. across the river mm-hmm. at, at the, at the concert venue. Yeah. People can like literally walk to the ferry and take stuff. I know it's a ferry right here. Yeah, it's a ferry. Oh. Yeah, uh, it takes you to like, Camden, right straight across, and then it takes you back. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's. I never knew that. So there's it helps that there are things going on in the city. Mm-hmm. It's not just you know let's go visit the Liberty Bell. Yeah. Like what else can I do after that twenty five minutes? Yeah. Now, well, now what I do? <laughs> yeah. Like, for the rest. Well, actually, of the museum is really nice now. But yeah, yeah, the American uh, American uh, history or history, revolution history, history yeah. museum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, so the more amenities and more things going on in the city helps, um, uh, for the hotel and the restaurant, you know, um, and, you know, now there are more restaurants and more hotels, but the same amount of business, like yeah. uh, the, the, the supply and demand of fluctuates, fluctuates. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even if you talk to the experts, so, you know, if you talk to the GMs and the owners of the hotels, there is a difference between what, <laughs> we think and what they think we need mm-hmm. based on a national averages right. and stuff and about supply and demand. And there's like stuff coming back on board. Like there's going to be a W in center city. There's going to be the four seasons going to open by the end of the year. Really? Uh, there's probably two other big hotels and they're like, well, we still need a, B and C. We still need some smaller places. And if you ask me, I'm like, no, you don't because yeah. I'm a smaller place. You don't need any more like me. Yeah. I need a different. We are de- definitely different. I mean, you offer a lot of different. So what people don't see here, if you're listening only, it's a very old building. It's on the waterfront. It's really nice. There's tons of places around here to go, rest other restaurant wise, oh, but yeah. also to like sightsee and um, you know you can go up Market Street and see the city, and then hop on a cab and go up JFK and go to every museum if you want. Or I've only been here seven years, seven and a half years. So for me, it's I'm still learning the city. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a still exposed brick here from the original buildings and, you know, 120 different wines, which is huge because, I mean, on, and they, you know, the restaurant, the food here is really good. And I didn't know Carlo, what, six, seven years ago, basically. And I came here for my anniversary with my wife. And I found, you know, just recently, a couple of years ago when we were on the board for the same rugby team together. Found out you own like oh you didn't know that you owned it and then <laughs> um, but yeah so I've been here before and didn't know it so yeah. um, with your business obviously there's a large people component in this you're taking care of customers your employees you're running your business tell me like what your challenges are on the people side of the business uh, yeah I was I was thinking about that because you, you didn't give me any questions ahead of time so I just had I thought of that and I was like literally yeah you 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 deal with people every day. Mm-hmm. Um, even even like vendors and 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 uh, people that work for you and you know we have you know we have computer software that we use to run the business and we have you know we pay them fees and, and, and licensing fees to to use it to use it mm-hmm. and then when you're trying trying to get them like I, sometimes I forget oh yeah I'm the customer I always act like yeah I, I'm I'm the manager of the place or taking care of someone like no you know, you have to you have to give me services because I pay you right. And it's and, and if if I have to like explain myself three four times, then I start getting frustrated. So dealing with that, on top of you know running the business, running business and, and taking care of guests, and you know I always I always kind of follow the principle of, uh, you know, don't say no, mm-hmm. never say no. Uh, you know, you want the yes and you never want to hear no. You say you rather say yes or yes and mm-hmm. you'll get this plus this. Okay. And and the plus is something that guests will never, you know, expect. Um, and then they, 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 they see the value in that. So sure, like your, um, the internet didn't work last night. So yeah, we're going to give you your money back over the internet and then we're going to give you this so. uh, $20 towards the restaurant. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I try to empower, empower my, my staff to do acts like, like I, like I would do, mm-hmm. like, you don't have to call me like for every, right. So that's decentralized command. You tell them this is the limit where you can do what I'll, I'll allow you to do. Yeah, you know, in the limits of the business, you're not giving away the entire. Giving away, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, free dinner. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I get that. 
and I think they're they're back probably. A little, I'm I say yes to everything, so mm-hmm. they're probably stricter. So they probably save me money by <laughs> by me not my, it's a free beer. Yeah, being not being <laughs> yeah. not being there or being yeah. at the front desk or behind the bar. Yeah, uh, that's actually literally how we how we came up. We we make limoncello here, and that's what we give away uh, at the end. Make of your day. own limoncello. Make your own limoncello. Oh, wow. So instead of you know you know having a comp check of of two hundred dollars mm-hmm. every night you just for make buying a and give it away. Lim- yeah and it's and here's it, some free shots yeah, yeah. And, and, and and people love it and it's mm-hmm. and then, and we do make it it's my answer recipe nice um you can make sure it stays cold or becomes yeah, poison right yeah no, no, no. <laughs> you can still drink it hot it's, it's much better cold yeah. <laughs> yeah in the freezer out of the freezer mm-hmm. um so yeah so dealing you know you know you know staff is staff you have good ones you have bad ones just just like anybody like you go into a real re- retail place and as a customer, you might get a good person or you might get a bad person. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it takes a pe- special person to do some of the jobs like that we have here, meaning like, you know, dishwashers and housekeepers and, uh, you know, front, front, front of the line kind of people and, and front of the house, back front of the house. house. Yeah. Stuff that people don't see, like, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and you know, for us, and then I think it's, it's, it speaks well to us is that we have people that have been here for multiple years, like, right. ten, you know, double, double digit years. And, uh, and you know, the manager was a bartender with me when, I, when I was 19 and he's, st- he's still here. Yeah. My, my assistant manager has been here like 22 years. Um, and then some housekeepers have been here like 10 years and wow. So, you That's know, longevity right there. Yeah. And also we give benefits. I think, yeah. I think we take care of them and they take care of us. So it's like a mutual benefit, benefit yeah. going back and forth. So I think if, when people appreciate that, I mean, pe- people, I'm talking about people when our employees appreciate that we take care of them. It, it it it's it comes back to us mm-hmm. and it's not that we ex- i mean not that we don't expect it it's just something that we've always done uh and it's you know if you treat people well they'll treat you well of and course. people are gonna if people are gonna step on you they're gonna step on you regardless you know and, and i think maybe some people sometimes uh because we're, we're very we're family business uh maybe sometimes people take it personal mm-hmm. you know meaning it, you know as they feel like it's their business too yeah, yeah, they 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 have a they have a, even though they have a, a pe- not a piece of it, but uh you know empowering them to make those decisions that I was talking about earlier, and right. and you know, yeah, you can you know you know you know be just a little bit more friendlier too. I think it it get, it, it loosens them up mm-hmm. that it's not we're not always like on top of them and micromanaging them and and kind of letting them you know run the business yeah. you know in in our structure, but to be themselves. And I think when people see that oh. It's not just like cookie cutter. The front desk agent made a joke and was funny. And, yeah. and you know, you know, I had a crazy shirt on and made, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it was yeah. like, or, you he know, played off you. Yeah. And when they ask questions like, well, I don't really like that cheesesteak place. I like this cheesesteak. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, a big well, contention yeah, that, point here in the city, right? Like where's the best cheesesteak? Well, that's, steak that's our number two question. Where's the Liberty Belt and where can I get the cheesesteak? Yeah, that's yeah. like number two, the top, <laughs> top two questions. I had, I was on relatives come visit me. I take them to the terminal. And I'll take them to down to the museum or the museum row and say, oh, you want to go, which one do you want to go to? Or I take them to the Liberty Bell Museum, which I like, um, and show them Old City or whatever. And then I'm like, they're always like, where's the best cheesesteak? I'm like, I, for newcomers, I always take them to gyms yeah. on, on Sal, right by, the, right by O'Neill's. But um, other than that, I mean, everybody has, oh, you know, Prince's and, and yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, I never do uh, Gino's or, or Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just eat them. But um, anyway, so you were talking about people side and we're talking about trust and loyalty, right? Cause that's really the tenets of leadership in my opinion. And that's really what you're doing, right? You're creating loyalty by building trust and trust. I had this exact conversation yesterday. Trust equals credibility, reliability, and intimacy over self-interest, right? So you build that intimacy by sharing the power with them, right? And that's how you're building that trust. And you teach them, Hey, I did the same thing from a little kid. I've done everything in the hotel and restaurant to where I'm doing right now. So that's the reliability and, and then the credibility behind it. And then the self-interest is to help the business grow and build that trust. Right. So, um, process. So on the process side of the business, and that could be growing it in either direction, right? The sale, the, the, the business development side of it, what are your biggest challenges there? And it sounds like we kind of touched on it earlier about flow. So how are you, how are you overcoming that? Um, well, overcoming it i think you're on a daily basis you're overcoming it <laughs> yeah uh but i think i i think going back to like just sort of uh not rudimentary but more more so like basics going back mm-hmm. to basics like 
okay, we're, we're an older property. Um, and then you'll see that on like reviews and, and just people's, uh, like on Yelp or whatever. Yeah. Yelp and TripAdvisor, mm -hmm. uh, are the two TripAdvisor for the hotel Yelp mm -hmm. is, and, and Google and Facebook right. now is like has reviews and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's, and it's multiple places, but <clears throat> mostly for the hotel, it's TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. And, um, so like, I guess like 10, 10, eight years ago, people, even though we were, you know, at that point we're, we're an older hotel. Um, and we went, when we first opened, we start, we wanted to have this like Americana look. Mm -hmm. So it was very like older. old school American yeah. furniture and, and, uh, and, you know, wallpaper was like a little bit more floral. I kind of called it grandma. Yeah. Or like, you know, if your yeah, grandma plastic was... on the plastic. on the Yeah, couch. no, we didn't yeah, get that yeah, far. Yeah. We didn't do no, that no. far. <laughs> but, you know, that's how yeah, I grew yeah, up too. Yeah, like yeah. we had the floral wallpaper and like our couches were covered so that they would they'd get dirty. Yeah. And, and the she and the comforters were kind of like, you know, a little bit over the top. Quilty, quilty. Quilty top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then we have to modernize it. So you, and the same thing like, right before we walked in, you said, I haven't been in a while. We've modernized the yeah, it looks really good. Uh, the restaurant as well. Mm -hmm. So we've been ongoing the hotel for the last five years because we can't really we're not like a big place and close a whole yeah floor and like do it all in one shot and have like forty guys in here. Mm -hmm. It's usually two or three guys working in a room at a time, time, and so it's yeah. like it is almost one incremental room at a time. yeah incrementally. Yeah. So we're like like ninety five percent done there, just some like tweaks here and there. Um, so and then also the restaurant so we kind of i would say modernize it but also you know I, our tagline in, in our in our uh on hold is uh old world charm with modern day comfort like, yeah you know it's like that's still, great like that. you still feel like it's different and it's mm -hmm. a bit older but you have like you know flat screen tvs and, and you know super fast like a wi-fi platform, like a platform pipe of bed maybe or yeah something. no but yeah more and it's more cleaner white yeah. it's not just you know now it's all white not the Get rid of all the floral wallpaper. <laughs> no paisley modern, rugs on modern, the floor. <laughs> no modern, modern like bedposts and furniture. Right. Or, you know right. stuff that you would you would put in your your own bedrooms. Mm -hmm. You know like stuff that you would want to right. you know buy. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is sort of building on that, and then trying to bring in the customers. Because then people are like, well, I haven't been there in years. So eat for both places, and you know, how has it changed? You know, kind of. So that's um, you know, and of course like. My 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 stepmom actually helps out with the interior design mm -hmm. and and decorations and and, and you know is she kind a designer. Of, yeah, well, not really. Like she just has a really good eye for that. Okay. Um, she was a she was a hotel GM here when I was. That's how my dad and she met uh, a long time ago. Uh, but um, so she knows. But that was also in the nineties. Right. Running a hotel is a little different. You know, literally there was no computers. Right. Everything, they did everything, everything on a paper. Yeah. Literally, it's not that. Sh sh <laughs> yeah, no, no, like literally adding up, you know, the taxes yeah. every day on a piece of paper. Oh. The credit card machines were like, I remember, you know, yeah, <laughs> my first job was doing like, you know, uh, so like, so I mean, learning from that, you know, having that like base is really going forward, like the the process of trying to, you know, it, and also the technology we talked about is 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 super vital now for me, the hotel. And even for the restaurant with social media, mm -hmm. you know, how, th how people find out about things, how things, you know, get go viral or why, why did this post? Like actually we had a marketing meeting today and a month, we have one, one, a, one a month and our best post was a really cool picture of our, one of our desserts, our new desserts. And it was like an olive oil cake with like lemon and, and that was the highest it's like engagement. Why, yeah. Yeah. Why? Because uh, people love dessert. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, but, people will lie that they don't order it or eat it <laughs> but they'll click on it they can like a picture there's no calories in liking a picture right <laughs> yeah exactly so so it's like stuff like why and it's always like do you guys come up with new desserts all the time or is it just like once in a moon or, or what what's that do you come up with new desserts and new dishes oh yeah 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 i even asked that because i have because i don't I, i'm one of those people that don't eat dessert so i don't eat my dessert here but uh the only desserts i ever eat are like you know fruit or like a fruit based dessert okay I'm not, i don't like big cakey stuff i like like well the... actually i made this at a cooking demo with the chef mm -hmm. it's olive oil so okay. it has like you know good fat it's like yeah. and it's really light and airy and um but the cream and has a ton of sugar in it yeah. but anyway so it's like ha half good fruit it's, uh, it's a yin and yang yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh so yeah so he just changed it so i it was like i would because i don't look at the menu all the time 
and at least the dessert menu. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is new, this is new. And I was like, oh great. So I, you know, now now we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't have dinner. I probably are going to go grab a piece later, <laughs> um, just to make sure you have quality control. Yeah, quality control, making sure. Oh, yeah. this is good. This is good. Give it good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. <laughs> but I was like, oh, rum, a rum. Yeah, I would always tweak stuff. I was, I give, I give positive give feedback. feedback. Yeah, 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 positive feedback. So who's handling that for you? Are you guys who you have an out? You have a, an agency doing your social media and your marketing, or how are you doing? That? Uh, we have we have an in house person that does marketing and does like special like special events like outside events. Right. Uh, so we're doing the targeted ads too. Like, are they putting out putting it out to the world? Or yeah, no? yeah. Okay. Um, and they'll try things and tweak things, mm-hmm. and they'll they go to conferences. They were just talking about today that you know maybe we'll go we'll go outside of Philadelphia. We'll go up to New York. And because, you know, that's kind of like the mecca of, yeah, uh, of, yeah. So, and, and, um, you know, you pay what you get for it. If you're going to a free thing that the city's running, yeah. I mean, uh, that you pay because you have a membership, mm-hmm. it's not really, I mean, it's, sometimes they really bring in really good people. From the chamber or? Well, from... the chamber does, the chamber does. I've gone to, I went to a couple last. Uh, the chamber year. does good events. I've been to a couple yeah. executive board uh, events for the chamber um, and they were really positive and they give you a lot for, for what you're doing. But um, yeah. I think it's it's actually good. I I can't afford it yet in my business, but eventually I will, and I'd like to be a part of it more more part of it. Yeah, and I kind of want because I paid I paid for a membership, and mm-hmm. then if I don't use it, it's like yeah. lost money. So you can go to a lot of those networking events yeah. and find people. Like yes, my restaurants where we do one of the. How old is the rest? How is the hotel and restaurant? Like they're this? the same age, so twenty eight years. So twenty, but the actual space is two hundred years old. 1828 is the more so yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys be like one of the oldest hotel restaurants in the city because really it is based on the space right or it's based on the year you open okay yeah i mean yeah i think ralph's in south philly is the oldest italian restaurant oh yeah yeah and then love me and dante luigi's mm-hmm. is probably two of the older ones there might be some like luncheonettes that about ralph's on third right ralph's on ninth okay yeah i think i've been there before as well my my great-grandmother lived in south philly uh after my grandfather, my great grandfather disappeared. <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyway, um, that's that's what I know about that. A little bit about that. But um, all right. So that's how you're developing and building your business is through the process side of social media and going through the networking events. Right. Yeah, I mean, and then you know, word of mouth and, mm-hmm. and you know, people people eating here and mm-hmm. telling people that they had a great time and you know, them posting social media. You know. Uh, getting influencers in here and it doesn't matter, you know, we'll, we had a fashion blogger come mm-hmm. in and she has like a half a million followers. So it's really, actually a good way to grow your business. Yeah. I mean, cross, cross promote, mm-hmm. you know, we're, I, that's what I brought up today. There's a, so we're doing these wine club. We have a wine club, which we just started. I was telling you earlier about the trivia night that mm-hmm. I'm going to, that I do once a yeah. month and it's wine focused, mm-hmm. oh, wine, okay. food in Philly trivia. Uh, they do a blind tasting of a of a of a wine, and wine. then they get they get to try to figure out like where it's from, what kind of grape it is. Um, so I make it fun too. But um, the cross promoting. So instead of doing um, in October, just like you know breast cancer awareness month, and doing something woman focused like mm-hmm. women in wine class, or you know uh, women you the women so the women in wine meaning the wine makers are women. And then have the class revolve around. Would you that. charge for them to come here and do yeah, that? Yeah, we do. It's thirty five dollars, and they have a club. So you can buy the wine club membership, and there's all these benefits <laughs> that, that that come with it. Um, and you guys bring the cases in, and you sell. Uh, yeah, it's either or... one we buy, or someone, or a winemaker will come in and donate it. But most mm-hmm. most time, we have to buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, so like so like not just it's not just a wine class. It's also wine. So we'll get like you get a double bonus by having the women in wine aspect and the wine class. I think you should pie market those more targeted marketing. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Like you know, uh, you know, on the main line and in, in, in certain air demographics that you're trying to target because you want them to come here and experience the place. And then, okay, and we also have a hotel and for your staycations for your family yeah. and or for you and your significant other. And then the restaurant itself and the yeah. food. You know, I mean, food. women make the the two decisions. Mm-hmm. The two industries that I'm in, especially wine, more wine, more more women drink wine more above percentage than mm-hmm. men. Yeah, men still drink more than women, but women drink more wine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then the other thing is that women are like it's like it's like I think the last stat I saw was like seventy two percent of the decisions of where to go on vacation and where to stay. Mm-hmm. 
and then you know they'll that's they'll drive they drive yeah, those that's decisions. your demographic you create yeah, yeah, your no, persona yeah. based on that i'm not saying that we just specifically but you know when you are there's nothing wrong with that yeah when you want no, to talk no, to them client, and let them yeah. know let them know that you have these services and you have this spot i mean it's, it's close and it's still like it's a getaway right? yeah I mean, also, you know, if, if there's a wedding market, because we have a hotel, we even necessarily can't do weddings here, but the weekends are, you know, for for having a home base for a wedding, but also we have the banquet space that we're sitting in and you know, the restaurant. So doing a rehearsal dinner here, staying over. Mm -hmm. So they're here for two nights, Friday and Saturday. They have the wedding on Saturday mm -hmm. and they check out and some people have brunch. So we yeah. get, we get a three, we get a three shot right over three days. And that's like everyone wins mm -hmm. because they have a great time. It's a life event for them. And then, but then you're dealing, talking about people, you're like, you're like, oh, you're not really dealing with the bride sometimes. Sometimes you're dealing with the groom mm -hmm. or sometimes yeah. you're dealing with, you know. Somebody in the family who's running. Four different yeah, parents, yeah. four different sets of parents. It's kind of crazy sometimes. Like how, but. Uh, what about midweek rates for like travelers? Because that's like a big draw for me. Like when I came to come to Philly for work, I always look for like, you know, different spots that were near certain areas, but that also that were a great option. I had a, you know, a great restaurant and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, midweek, I'm sure you probably lower your rates a little bit because yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's off, off peak. Yeah. Off peak. And, uh, you know, we haven't, we have something that's not published. Uh, it's called the neighborhood rate. Mm -hmm. And it's like anyone who has does business in a neighborhood or you, and now there's a lot more rentals and, and people buying and living in, in old city. Uh, we have a, something called a spare bedroom rate, which is basically the same thing as, as a neighborhood rate. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, just because you know you live in a neighborhood, you don't want your parents to sleep in your two bedroom. They can <laughs> yeah. come here. See you later, mom. Yeah. The street. Here, here's here's a great yeah, hotel. That's a good idea. You know? So we we market that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, during the week, like unless there's something going on in the city, it, it is it literally it's you know we're cordial to each other in the hotel mm -hmm. industry. Um, and we have a monthly marketing, um, excuse me, monthly managers meeting. Um, and we go over like issues that, that we, you know, that you're facing. Yeah. I was on the board. I was vice president. Okay. Uh, for about three years. Um, but yeah, we don't, we're not allowed to talk about rates, but we could all see each other's rates. We, we yeah, all, all paid, public domain. Yeah. We, we all call other people to find out and you yeah. way to do it. Yeah. And then back in the day we would have to call, we called like seven hotels, like, you know, and we would you know, identify ourselves as, you know, call, I'm calling from the pen for you. What's your best rate and availability today? So, oh, no. We, I mean, no, like I've heard other hotels call blindly. Oh, not, oh yeah. Not mentioning who they are. Like, hey, what's your rate for tonight? You know, I'm looking for a room tonight in the city or whatever. And they would do it without telling them that they were oh, okay. in the industry. All right. So that's not, I mean, that's, I mean, uh, it just, we, maybe the, you guys have a different, no, like, ex like uh, code within the city to do it. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sure people we've done it. I know I've, not that I've done it, but I've gone on other people's websites as far as like their, mm -hmm. their, their published rates. Well, yeah, well, they're published rates, but we're not so much about the, that. That's easy. That's, that's all like, but we're all on hotels.com mm -hmm. or Expedia and it's like, and or I can like go to the website, but there's got the, there's something called rate parity. So you need to have the same rate across all platforms unless there's like a special like insider code right. or my website only mobile. Right. You know, right. that's, you know, there's like unpublished things like mm -hmm. that people that, you know, every time someone figures out a way around something, the bigger, the OTAs, the big travel agent mm -hmm. companies will figure out a way to make you not do that. So, but, but they really can't, they can't force you not to use your own website. So you just kind of, you know, you push it. Push everybody to their website and, you know, or call us directly because that saves us money if they call us directly. So right. or you have to pay a fee. Yeah. Well, we have to, anything that goes through anything, but not you know, your website. Your well, I still, I still have to pay per click or pay, pay per a reservation. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the worst is if it's a, a lead through like say American express and then it goes through somebody else and then it comes through You're getting the nothing. internet. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting dinged. 10%, 10%, 7%, $5. Like it's like, so by the time I, that, that one, not any money yeah, then that's why, that's why that 150 rate is not available to them. Mm -hmm. The 189 rate is available because by the time everything, everybody gets paid, I'm getting 139. So Jeez. it's like, that's a, that's a, that's mm -hmm. part of. So that's what we're talk about now with the profit side. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. your big challenge, yeah. right? Is, is your creep. And I, I call it creep because it's really from the top down waterfall effects. If, if you drive business from, a credit card company who has points or you drive it from your online marketing, you're paying for the click, but you're also paying for 
each transaction to the other person to go to your website. That's that's a lot. Yeah. That's a really lot. You want to streamline that and take that like if you can control it yourself and just drive it from your social into your website. Yes, you're paying per click, but you're taking the other people out of the equation. Yeah. So I mean, I made a I made a decision last year or this year last year to stop using Expedia mm -hmm. um, because the other one of the I, I'm calling them out, but it's fine. But yeah. booking, not my not podcast. My <laughs> booking dot com is is more uh, is more fits us better because it's a European company, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of their clients are from Europe and they're coming to Philadelphia or the East Coast and Philadelphia happens mm -hmm. to be one of their stops. And um, we're the highest percentage, and we're, we're not the biggest dollar amount, like bottom line dollar amount for them. But as far as how many European travelers stay here, we're the number one, we're the biggest. Really? Yeah, we're like, you know, um, because we feel more like a European hotel. It does feel like a European. I would definitely say that. I've been in working for two European companies for the last you know, three years, and that's exactly what I feel when I like. It feels very Italian, very European in here. Like, uh, it, my last company is from Genoa, and a lot of the restaurants are in the warehouse district. And it's the exact same thing as this behind you with exposed brick and like or exposed rock, yeah. and the archways from where they used to store grain or fish or whatever. You know, like it's a very old school feel in here. You know, in this room at least, and the other ones too. It feels more modern, but yeah. here I feel like I'm in Genoa and. You know, so there's a, you know, a water seltzer machine over in the corner and a small little bar and Nona comes out and makes, you know, yeah. it's a five options. You have and that's it, you know, um, which you could do too, if you wanted to. But, yeah. um, anyway, so that's obviously that's your biggest thing is driving people to your, your business, but directly from one marketing campaign rather than turning it down from five different other sources. Yeah, and I still, I mean, I still have, I, I pay a company out of New York uh, called Hubs Digital. I have a monthly call with them. Uh, we have a marketing brand out of LA that, that uh, I guess, represents us. Um, that was the 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 American Express, Holmes mm -hmm. Briscoe thing. I just like, you know, they got to get a piece because they got the lead mm -hmm. and, and the, you know, the, their client has to get a piece. Um, even though that's internal, it's still 25% oh, yeah. that off it's, the top. That's a big t a cut. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah. So as a small hotel, and I like, I, I joked the other day is that I rarely say no. I say, I say yes. So you're saying yes sure, all the no time. Problem. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. I, I could be vice president for two more years. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's like, I was like, no, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. So, but as uh, the, so I was going with that, but the, so trying to redirect. So the booking dot com was a decision that I made because they, even though I they are taking a cut, they perform the best for me and they're the best fit for me. Mm -hmm. So why am I giving some other a mega mega billion dollar uh, you know why am I helping them? And it didn't hurt my bottom line. Right. It didn't hurt my occupancy. My I was the, the rate the word that we use in a hotel is ADR average daily rate. My average daily rate went up ten dollars. Because Europeans, they yeah. they they spend more when they're here. Mm -hmm. They also book well in advance. They're not doing last minute stuff. Mm -hmm. They're booking like five six months out in advance because they they're planning their vacations. Yeah. So it's like a better. Andiamo a Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like UK, Italy, mm -hmm. uh, South America, yeah, Ireland, Germany, um, and even Asia, Asia, really? Asian, yeah, Chinese and, and Japanese, and wow. you get some Australians here once in a while, um, Canadians. Yeah. Too. yeah so anyway it's it's so that was sort of a decision that that i made just so like it's a smart idea i mean that's smart because it, uh, obviously you take a layer out of the transaction that can save you money and it did right and you yeah. took a risk but it was worth it you did the calculation said yeah let's take these guys out of the equation just focus all our efforts with booking and drive more traffic through booking and then we're seeing it worked yeah and they're they're good on the client side mm -hmm. like i'm friends with my actually just moved on but Girl Nicole was here, was my my I guess rep and or local like mm -hmm. this was her territory. Mm -hmm. You know she's here for like an hour once a month yeah. and we become friends and you know shoot the you know what and then and then we're like but we're also talking about business and like what's working for for this and she you know this I think this program will work well for you right because if they make money and we make money they make money so right. it doesn't make it, it makes sense, sense. It's a for us to work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just, they were just always, again, I would like say yes, or I, there I would not always say yes. Cause you know, like if you're in the, 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 you know, 
elite level of of this, you you're you know you get bumped up and spot like sponsored listings and stuff yeah, like that yeah. on the website. I was like, you know, it's I don't really need that extra. I mean, I do need extra rooms and 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 uh, excuse me, money and profits, but I don't necessarily need to because then I don't have control over the how a push person books, right? So if everyone's always hitting the sponsor because that's the first thing they see. I'm but then if they don't buy or they don't book with you, you're kind of it's another, wasting money. It's another 7% yeah. that I'm losing. So I was like, you know, I'm doing well now. Some things I'll try. Mm -hmm. like, I, I think uh, you have to experiment with that. You yeah, can't no, be like, oh, no, it's only this and so I'm going to do yeah, it. Yeah, no. And like we, I use, sometimes, I, you know, throwing in stuff like parking or a voucher to the mm -hmm. restaurant or a cookbook or whatever, whatever we have, like marketing that, that could like differentiate us from mm -hmm. someone else. Um, having the restaurant and wine bar definitely does. So that's why I always incorporate food. Uh, parking is not our parking lot. So it's out of our pocket or out of the room rent. So it's hard to always do that. Um, but I do Cyber Monday or Cyber Week. <laughs> it's called Cyber Monday. Isn't it? It's a week up to Cyber Monday. And but also to fill in my um, you're in Christmas you're in no yeah to fill in my first quarter like mm -hmm. the, per, the first three months of the year because mm -hmm. usually the, it's like again it's really low it's like and it sort of slowly progresses to the spring well people are still recovering from the holidays financially and yeah like, oh, I don't want to travel or whatever unless it's for business or yeah no one you know like no one wants to come to, even though it's not Minnesota it's yeah, yeah it's Philadelphia so cold. is cold <laughs> is cold in the winter here it hasn't been as cold like this yeah. week different but yeah, you know, yeah. other than that uh, so no one wants to you know the soccer coaches always come in January. So that's like mm. the only one that's like kind of really, yeah, the U S soccer coaches. Really? And it's like the first or second week. And then lacrosse comes, there's a volleyball, like there's some sports. So the Philadelphia sports kind of gross. It's actually really good mm. getting events, the rugby, the U S yeah, yeah, yeah. sevens in the, in the summer. Um, we don't really feel too much of that. Unless How do you get them there? How do you get down to, to NRG? Do you give them a, a van or do they have your own van? Or uh, no, no, no. They get, they get down there by themselves. Okay. They don't really, you know, um, but the soccer coaches are in convention center. Uh, oh, okay. And lacrosse is sometimes it's down. I think it's at the state. I think it's at the link. Hmm. Uh, the games at least. Um, and I think we're getting. I think we're getting a women's NCAA basketball this year or next year. Oh, like uh, March. Like, like, yeah, March yeah. Madness. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and so we get we get UConn like uh, UConn coaches buddies with my dad and like Italian guys. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Italian guys in their sixties and. They're, <laughs> Hey, Paisan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it has been coming every time they play Villanova, or they they still come for dinner here That's and great. like hang out and stuff. So yeah, um, so it's like ongoing relationships, like how you have like you always have to be out and about, like and like it, mm. have, reminding people that you're that you're, you're here. You're still here, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, we never go. We know we're at, you know, like oh, we renovated. You have a new chef, like you know, we're. Yeah. You know, we're doing this now. We have a wine club. We're doing this, you know, this. this. Yeah, I think that's thing. what you have to start doing is just really targeting those six business things and going out to that demographic and putting it out there and say, let's go on town for this. It's going on tonight. Something to do, you know? Yeah, and we have to look at stuff that, like, you know, if you don't try it, you can't say, oh, you can't be, like, you know, Monday, mo Monday morning quarterbacking and saying, like, exactly. oh, we should have done this. We should have done that. We didn't do this. Or you see someone else take your take your the idea, idea yeah, and then, like, run with it and be successful. It makes you so mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's why you're, and that's the the hotel on the hotel side. I do that almost daily. Is my competitive set like I always I always see who let's ask about rates. Like, what is the Hilton charging? What is the what is it called now? It was used to be the old Omni. I think it's called it's a Renaissance hotel yeah, yeah, on Fourth right. and Chestnut. Uh, the the small the small place. So hotel of, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean I don't, I look on my side of town or it's hotels similar to me, um, or hotels that are like in my price range. Which I, as far as Philadelphia, I'm in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, but then restaurants, I think restaurants do more now because of social media. Because you can be a friend of Vintage, I can mm -hmm. be a friend of any of the star restaurants, yeah. and follow them on on Instagram. Or Jose Garces, I'm on his email list because I had ate in a mod at ten years ago. <laughs> I see everything he does, like you right. know, like you know, when, when you know Christmas in July. Literally, they start sending out stuff in July about Christmas parties. That's how far in advance. Yeah, yeah, they're marketing they're doing stuff, and I'm like, I'm always like, who's first? This is it us, star restaurants, or yeah. Garces? And usually, it's like one of us like goes out early, and it, and some, it'll just like a little teaser. In, well, in July. everybody knows each other too. It's probably the thing. It's like a very small network here. In the city. Yeah, and I mean, some most of the people are you know most people on on the marketing side are usually tend to be younger, so that's like you know. They were born when this place opened, so they were like never like <laughs> or not or not yeah 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 or not. <laughs>
or not yeah or their parents met here or something yeah like, yeah yeah and they're like that's great <laughs> so after that it's it's really you deal with these challenges how do you you know ring the bell every day how do you stay motivated what's your secret to, to go out and be as an entrepreneur um it's just it's hard it is hard it's difficult to to you know um to like come in, you know, like kind of, I don't know, be, be a little uh, psychiatrist and like listen to everyone and everyone's issues and, and, you know, and this person did this and, and, or, you know, this customer said that and like, how could we like mm -hmm. sort of just sort of taking it all in uh, that's, you know, but that's just part of this business. Um, and I, and that's kind of like I, my, one of my strong points is that I kind of like, and it's, it's trying to find out problems, like being a detective and just like trying to listen, listen and listen to get everyone's listen. Get, get, get everyone's side of the story. Don't right. just believe the first thing you do and just go fly off the handle. It's like kids too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it is. Uh, it was weird when I first started because I was young. I was 27, 28. Mm -hmm. And literally the housekeepers are like my mom's age. It could have been my mom's age. So I'm like, I'm now I'm in charge of women yeah. who I, I one I respect them, but now I have they have to listen to me, so I have to gain their respect. But yeah, um, build that trust, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but as far as like what I think creating new, I, I like creating new things, new because th if you just like if you stay stagnant, you're gonna it's like you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I come, I come in, and I do the same. I, first thing I do is you know, I'm, I don't like check my email, voicemails, like the like, most like the rest of us, mm -hmm. you know, do, and then sort of just uh, prioritize like what I need to do first. And, you know, and I'm also, I always do the big things first in the morning and then the afternoon, take care of the other stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a big list guy too. So I always yeah. like make lists for myself. Um, you have to, yeah, you have to, yeah, if you're busy, like there's no way to be like, I used to keep everything up here. And then like one day it's like, I can't, I had to start putting everything in a calendar and yeah. I live and die by my calendar <laughs> and my to do list, electronic to do list. Yeah. If I, and I've been doing that for the last, I want to say uh, at least 10 years because, you know, keep, before it was keeping track of surgeries, keeping track of doctors, keeping track of this meeting, that meeting, sales calls, dinners, whatever. And then patient names, CDs, also stuff like, all right, I got to put this in. I can't just write this down anymore. I have to put it in there so I can find it whenever I need it and put reminders in to remind me and, and then to to-do list so that it reminds me, hey, you didn't do this yet. Like, I just got a reminder when we got here, like, I gave up yelling at the kids for Lent <laughs> because I, I have a short fuse and I'm like, all right, I'm not going to yell. So it reminded me, don't yell at the kids today. <laughs> you know? That's going. Cool. So, so you better make it a month. I got to make the rest of it. You're like 39 days ago. <laughs> oh, I can do it. I can do it. Um, but uh, I got my last yell in like Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> that was it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean like you have to. And that for me, motivating is, is them, is the family and everything else. I'm afraid to fail. And that's yeah. my big thing for me. It's just failure. I don't want to fail. So. Yeah, and I think it, hel it helps that the, especially with this place, that it's it, my I'm have a huge vested interest because it's gotten our name attached to it, and it's like literally it's my house. Mm -hmm. It's like my dad calls it, you know, once in a while we call it his playground because yeah. he comes here and he gets to do stuff, and you know he's getting, you know, he's he can retire if he wants to at this point, mm -hmm. but. I don't, he's like a shark. Like if he stops moving, he stops moving and he's going to die. Gonna die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he like, you know, he's I'm the same way. Like if I start move, stop moving, I fall asleep. Yeah. Like if I sit in a seat at, like on the couch and just relax, I fall asleep. Like yeah, within no. five minutes. Yeah, like, no, same thing. I'm like, because oh. <laughs> you know, I, I just move, 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 yeah. move, move. And if I don't, st if I stop moving, it's usually because I'm running on empty as it is. Like I'm up at five in the morning, working out, going through my day, getting ahead of the day, take care of the kids go through the day. Then when I come home, I'm like, all right, do the kids more to the or stuff around the house, whatever other workouts, things like that. And then it's, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night. Like last night I passed out at 10. <laughs> it's like watching the arrow while I'm doing work. I'm like, oh, you know, pass out. So, I mean, I feel it. You have to be self-motivated as an entrepreneur. You can't be like sitting back in your world and wait for something to happen. Yeah, and yeah. That's why RTB is like a boxing metaphor, rugby thing. Because you always have to keep moving forward. And you know, I think it's the same thing with you. Yeah. You're always moving forward. It seems like it, based on your, your why in the month club, your trivia nights, you're moving forward. You're changing with the times and you're finding different ways to attract people here to see what you have. It's about attention, right? Yeah, and I think, I think even I, the, the demographic of the, the wine club and the, um, 
the one trivia night was it was you know skewed a little older but there were like mothers and daughters that came That's actually good. they won that was the yeah. team that won there was like a, a an older teenage girl with her parents like but then there was like a, a two older women and guys from the rugby team yeah yeah arizona and oh, really? stephen craig yeah with their with their fiance oh, and wow. wives. yeah that's funny yeah um i didn't even know about it i gotta follow, i guess i'm not i don't get your stuff yeah uh, well I'll give, I'll get yeah. your email yeah. i have your email but uh so uh but so the so the 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 demographic of that is even though it's a little bit older it, it's millennials and i've gone to like a ton of like networking things and and trade shows where it's like you know market the marketing to millennials like if i see one more if i go to one more i could run one yeah yeah because i know so much about it because i've gone it's to no like different i mean i know I'm sorry it, like i i refuse to like people say oh managing millennials is hard no it's not think about managing draftees in vietnam like i don't want to die like yeah <laughs> these guys just want attention that's what they want yeah no I, like i said it was harder for me to to manage 50 year old women than it is to a 25 year old like yeah it, it it was so so anyway so the, the the base the base the bottom line that i got well not the bottom line but one of the things is like there are more about experiences correct you know like what am i getting out those of those two are perfect examples what am i what what am, how do i add this the content to my story mm -hmm. And I want to share it with the rest of the world. The why behind why you do it. But all right. of us like it. All of us like experiences and 100%. stories and stuff. And, and that's sort of my point. Like the people in the room that night and, and the last couple of Sundays were all over the age, all of both sexes. It was about having a good time and learning something mm -hmm. and getting something out of it and laughing and, and like drinking right? and drinking <laughs> and go, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, or yeah. like, you know, they, they walked out of here with something more than when they came in. And it's like, it's like it goes across all age groups, like as far as, and, and the value added, it's like what they're getting out of it. Yeah. I mean, I think also the story too here is that, and the reason why you do stuff is that this is your family business and it's, it's your lifeblood. So you believe in it and you want to share the experience of what you learned growing up here with everybody else. And yeah. that's to me looking from the outside in, that's the why, yeah. right? This is your lifeblood, right? And you, you live and breathe this place and you know, you can feel the rock. I'm like, oh yeah, this is my house. Yeah. Because it is. Yeah. And, you know, when you're up there doing your events and you're trying to go to business, it's because you care and you want this to succeed and, and make sure it doesn't fail, right? And that's the biggest thing for you. I yeah. Think. And that's for me is just outside of looking in. Yeah, no, no. It was, it was we had a hard, so we had the idea that the tri I use it, go back, I keep on bringing it back. I'm not I'm plugging it too, I guess. But <laughs> the trivia night, was like, we were trying to find someone who was charismatic that we knew that could like run the event. And we had like two really good people mm -hmm. and then just because scheduling, they couldn't do it. So it so was like, it. so it was like at the fifth month, I'm like, it's, you know, you know, crap or get off the pot. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like either do it. We either do it, I do it, or we don't do it at all. Right. And, you know, it's either, it's, you know, and I just wound up doing it. It was, it was, you know, I'm a pretty decent public speaker and I have some sort of personality. So I had, I, it worked. Right. You know, I've been to like a ton of trivia nights where it's like dry and it's just. I had a bad experience at my, I love trivia. And, uh, and I'm a huge like Trivial Pursuit nerd. We had one at my country club. And it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> the guy got twisted and like he was wasted. Oh, yeah. and it would be like 20 minutes between each question. I'm like, what are we doing? I'm like yelling. I'm like, what are we doing? We should have had a question, like five questions already. Like, what? Like, and they were like, Paul, I'm like, no, don't tell me to be quiet. I paid for this and this is what I want. You getting hammered up there, not asking questions. Right. You know, so that was, that, that's my. Yeah. No, I just had to keep it going. Yeah. No, that's like, you know, and you learn. It's it's like anything else. You like mm -hmm. learn from like doing it and experiencing it and going to other ones. Yeah. Like going to see what other people do, seeing what your are you know. Would quote, you do quote. a regular trivia night or just like a the wine one? I think wine wine was focused. It was a wine focus mm -hmm. because that's what we're about. And it's not just wine. Yeah. So Okay, so it's not just like it's Philly it was Philly trivia and food trivia and some of the food trivia had to do with like Philadelphia, like the Girl Scouts was started here. That was one of the questions. Okay. Harry's root beer was 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 for the first time in in like 1876. Mm -hmm. uh, bananas came through the United States for the I mean from Chiquita. South. Yeah, yeah, that's how Chiquita fruit pack. The guy the guy who brought it up through Philadelphia, he it, then he went to Boston and out of Boston he, and it turned into like three other companies, but it became Chiquita fruit pack. Now it's called Chiquita fruit pack, mm -hmm. and they used to actually be a really good client of ours. Really? Yeah, and grapes. They so like 
Philadelphia is a huge, I, not a lot of people know that. I don't know if it's still the case, but it's like the second lead in port. Like most of the grapes, really? like grapes that you get at a supermarket come through the port of oh, Philadelphia yeah. hmm. from Chile and South America. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's probably the blueberries too then. Yeah, well, the blueberries come from Chile. Chile, yeah. Peru. But, yeah, but also. I got some big ones the other day were like monsters. The um, and strawberries too. So we ha- actually, because we're by the port, we have like, we used to, when, I guess when there was more of that type of business, and that was like our bread and butter for a long time for hmm. the shipping company. So when they, cause when they pull into the port of Philadelphia, either they bring in a new captain to take the ship back down to South America or, or the, or vice versa, the captain right. stopping here mm-hmm. and going on to New York or right. Nova Scotia or whatever mm-hmm. the captains can't, you, when you're in a port and you come from outside of the country, you can't stay on the boat. Hmm. You can't stay in your quarters. You have to get off the boat. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So you can probably start marketing to them too. To oh, them. we've been, yeah, yeah we've yeah. been doing that forever. Yeah. So yeah, they're good. They're good client. That's a good client of ours. Like it's one. They just actually they used to be in a neighborhood, and that was the reason how we got uh, hmm. how we got introduced. And it's crazy business, man. <laughs> well, Carlo, I appreciate your time. No Talk to me about your business, how uh, how you manage all the different pillars of the business, and then how you get up and, and stay motivated every day. Really appreciate your time. Talk to me in the podcast. Tell me about you. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for taking me. Cheers.